In my view, the consolidation of the directives has been a good idea. The contracting authorities now no longer have to look at three texts of a directive. They can look at one text. The text has been reordered, so it uh, more accurately represents the stages of an award procedure. The thresholds have now been expressed in one currency as opposed to two currencies. The directive also allows for increased flexibility. An example of increased flexibility in the new directive can be seen in the introduction of the competitive dialogue procedure for more complex projects where the negotiated procedure is not available. Also, the directives allow for the use of electronic procurement such as dynamic purchasing systems and e-auctions so that the contracting authorities can make use of the benefits and cost savings that are associated with electronic procurement. Legislation by its nature is never easy to read for lay people. Lawyers are usually instructed to advise them on legislation. When you have legislation on a dense and complicated subject matter such as public procurement, this, the task of understanding legislation becomes even more difficult for the layperson. Bearing that in mind, the draft regulations as they currently stand in Ireland and the UK have done a good job in implementing the, or implementing the articles of the directive in my opinion and they have made it easier for the layperson to understand. A layperson should not however ever attempt to interpret the provisions of the new regulations themselves. It would be advisable for them to instruct a lawyer to do this on their behalf. Article 11 of the new directive allows contracting authorities to purchase directly from a central purchasing body without having to run a tendering process. Up to this point in the UK, central purchasing bodies have been used, but where a contracting authority wished to purchase from one of these bodies, it had to run a tendering process and the central purchasing body had to win the tender in competition with other tenderers. Article 11 of the new directive has been implemented in the UK by Regulation 22 of the draft implementing regs and uh, by Article 8, or, excuse me, by Regulation 8 in the draft regulations in Ireland. One of the main issues that has been highlighted by the Office of Government Commerce consultation report prior to implementation of these regs uh, has been that the use of central purchasing bodies might increase the use of aggregation of contracts and bulk buying. This can risk or could possibly risk marginalising SMEs in the procurement game. However, in my opinion, this won't always be the case. Value for money does not always come with uh, lowest cost and there will be many situations where it's more appropriate for contracting authorities to conclude individual framework agreements with smaller numbers of SMEs. Both Ireland and the UK have embraced the possibility of permitting contracting authorities to reserve certain contracts for sheltered workshops and sheltered employment programmes. This is implemented in the UK at Draft Regulation 16 and in Ireland at Draft Regulation 7. The major difference between the two implementing sets of regulations are that the UK regulations have fleshed out the provisions of the directive more substantially by providing more detailed definition of exactly what a sheltered workshop is what a disabled person is and what a sheltered employment program is. They have made reference to the Dis uh, Disability Discrimination Act 1995 and taken the definition from that act. Ireland on the other hand has not given any such detailed definitions. Perhaps one solution to this would be to make reference to the Disability Act 2005 which has just come into force um, in order to take a definition from that act. Ireland have implemented Article 27 through Regulation 27 of their implementing regulations and the UK have implemented this provision through Article 38 of their uh, implementing regulations. The major difference between the two provisions in the domestic regulations is that in Ireland it is mandatory for contracting authority to provide information in the contract documents uh, pertaining to where um, tenderers can find information in relation to their obligations in, uh, in regard to tax, environmental protection, working conditions and employment. This means that tenderers who find this information are obliged to state in their tender that they have considered the information while putting their tender together. In the UK this provision is discretionary so that contracting authorities may or may not provide such information for, con uh, for tenderers 
um, where they do, tenderers are obliged to, to make a statement stating that they have considered all the obligations in putting together their tender. This has both benefits and hindrances for the SME. It could be seen that uh, it provides an extra burden on the SME when putting together their tender in that they have to also uh, take into consideration this additional information. On the other hand, it could be seen as a helpful thing for the SME because the legislation is now all accessible and they have received guidelines, uh, guidance as to where um, all this information is now available. Both Ireland and the UK have embraced the possibility of using dynamic purchasing systems. In the UK, this has been implemented through Regulation 20 of their draft regulations, and in Ireland, this has been implemented through Regulation 36 of their new draft implementing regulations. Both of the implementing regulations effectively mirror the provisions and the directive, which uh, outline the steps to be taken when organising and awarding contracts through a dynamic purchasing system. However, one difference of note uh, between the two regulations relates to the time span that a, a dynamic purchasing system may be operated in. In the directive, uh, four years is the maximum permitted time in which a dynamic purchasing system may be uh, run for. This may be extended under the directive when justified by exceptional circumstances. In Ireland, this has been implemented by the phrase when a contracting authority determines that there has been exceptional circumstances. This seems to add a subjective element to the, uh, to the impl uh, implementing regulations, um, where it is up to the contracting authority to decide when and when it cannot uh, justify extending the four-year period. In the UK regulations, there is no such subjective element. Um, the four-year period may be extended when there are exceptional circumstances. This seems to apply a more objective test to the issue of when uh, a dynamic purchasing agreement can be extended beyond four years. Under Article 45 of the new Consolidated Directive, um, contracting authorities are obliged to exclude from a tendering process any tenderer who, who it is aware has been convicted of a criminal offence uh, in another member state. The term aware uh, is loosely defined in the directive and has been implemented in the UK regulations at Article 23 or Regulation 23 um, as actual knowledge. The difference between the UK and the Irish regulations is that in Ireland the uh, regulations say are uh, referred to knowledge rather than actual knowledge. This could imply constructive knowledge or could imply that the contracting authority is an, under a uh, greater obligation to explore whether or not a tenderer has been convicted of a criminal offence in another jurisdiction. In the UK, actual knowledge refers to the actual knowledge of the contracting authority. This means that it has to be actually made aware of the conviction that the tenderer has been convicted of, rather than having constructive knowledge of this offence.